All right, so I just wanted to get a better understanding of how you got your start in the business and how things were going in the late eighties. You want me to remember the? You want me to remember the late eighties? Yeah. Do you remember what dance hall was like during that time? Because, in my opinion, that was like the golden era of dance hall, like you know, the eighties leading into the nineties. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, dance hall was a way of life. It was. I don't. I don't. Because I don't want to say it's not vibrant. It's not a way of life now, but it wasn't about recording studios as much as it was about dance halls. So you went to parties, you had to represent live on a mic. You had to, as a girl, you had to keep up with the guys. You had, your lyrics had to be relevant, current, current, you know? So mm -hmm. if somebody started DJing in a dance about a shoe, you'd have to be able to also either make something up on the spot about a shoe or you know when you come back next week or tomorrow night, cause it's, it's from, I part the only th I think the only night I didn't party was Monday night. Truth be told, I'm not even lying. So you had to come back the next night with something. So that was well for me New York dance hall in a nutshell because I didn't start out in Jamaica. I started dance hall here. Okay, and uh, which part of New York? Well, I lived in the Bronx, but it was Brooklyn. I was always in Brooklyn. I got my first mic in Queens from Nicodemus on um, Jack Ruby Sound. It was wow. on tour up here. Okay. So it was a party in Queens, but I I kind of um, grew and honed my skills in the good old Brooklyn. Right. 